Hey everyone, so I'm trying something a little bit new today. It was suggested that maybe um, I set up a cam so that we can have a little bit more of an interaction. So um, let's get started. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Brass Birmingham. Um, it is the sequel to uh, Martin Wallace's Brass, which you can also get titled under Brass Lancashire. Um, so this is a two to four player game. Um, on the box it does say 60 to 120 minutes. Um, the 60 minute part of that is likely the introductory game. So I would expect to spend at least two and a half hours, especially on your first game playing this. Um, it's a great game. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm really looking forward to teaching you this. There are some small nuances that I think... Um, warrant having a little bit more of a discussion. So um, yeah, let's get right to it. So I have the board set up here right now so that you can see a bit better um, your personal player board and then I'm gonna remove that because I have set up the main board in a way that'll be easier for me to teach you how to play. So for right now, um, I can show you, this is gonna what your player board is gonna be set up like. You're gonna have your uh, different resource generating um, building types or, or um, industries down here on the bottom. So you'll have beer and coal and iron. And then at the top, you have manufactured goods, cotton, and your pottery. So if you actually take a look on your board, you can see what the required resources are needed to build it, as well as what the flip side of the tile will be is found on the other side. So you don't actually have to flip the tiles over to be able to see that, but I will show you. So you're gonna place them all um, faced with the color side up, so the black side down, and then on the reverse side of it, you actually have um, the amount of income that it'll increase as well as the victory points for selling that industry or having that tile flipped over. I'll explain that in a minute. I just wanted to go through your personal board with you so that you can understand a little bit about what that looks like. Now, the other thing that you'll notice on your personal board, and I'm gonna lift this up a little bit here, is that some of these industries um, you'll see on the bottom here, there is a blue half circle compared to at the top of some of these other industries. Let me just see where, what do we got here? Oh yeah. So, um, the pottery up here on the other side of it, there's actually a black half circle. So what that means is that those industries with the blue ones must be built during the first half of the game, the canal era. The ones with the black have to be built, or can only be built, I should say, during the rail era, so the second half of the game. Um, and then you're going to set your player board up in the way that it's showing here. So you place the tiles according to whatever the board says. So you have your industries labeled 1 through 4, sometimes 5, and all the way up to 8. So just set the tiles out, and some of them you'll notice have two tiles of each of the... Um, different levels of industry and some of the other ones only have one um, so that that's how you set up your player board and then now I'm gonna come back to the main board I'm just gonna put this aside because I'm not gonna really need to use this to show you much as I've set up the board in a way that I can show you some of these tiles but actually on the board so Okay, so I've gone ahead and just placed a couple industries out as well as a couple um, canals just so that you can see a bit more how the board will look. I'm actually going to lift this up a little bit here so that we can have a better view. Okay, so um, this is kind of what your board will end up looking like as you're playing through, but it's easier to explain the actions when there are actually things on the board. Um, so during setup, I mean, you can follow that in your rule book. You don't really need me to explain that. Um, other than keep in mind on your uh, resources here on the side, 
that there are little pips on the bottom in the number one spot. So there are two in the iron area and then there's one for coal. So you don't cover those. That's so that there's space allowed for when you actually do place those industries for them to be sold back to the market. Okay, so in this game, you're basically going to be trying to manage resources by profiting from the market to sell back to it, as well as using those resources to build and sell your industries. So that equates to victory points in the end. I would say that you specialize in a couple different things when you're playing. You're never going to be able to build everything. It's just too costly. Um, so let's get right to it. I'm going to go through the different um, rules uh, or the different actions of the game. Um, but first, I'm going to just talk about a couple concepts that are really important to understand when you are learning to play this game. So. The most important concept to learn is the difference between what is part of your network and what you are connected to. So they are both very different. Um... Oops, sorry, I guess I should probably pay attention to the chat a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's Brass Birmingham. So it's the second um, game, I guess, of the sort of the follow-up to um, Brass that was released in, I, I want to say it was 07 um, by Martin Wallace. So it, um, in my opinion, this is a better version of the game. There is the addition of beer as a resource, which I actually really like in the game. Um, there's also these variable market tiles that change things up a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I personally prefer this version to the original. Okay, so the, the two concepts that you guys really need to make sure that you're understanding well when you're playing is being connected to something or something that is part of your network. So that's important for a couple different actions, so I'll explain the difference. So being connected to something simply means that you can draw a line from the place that you need that resource to where you're delivering it to or where you're using it. So in this case, I have on the board set up here, I have a couple different links and um, two different players. Now, if we see down here at the bottom, we have this Oxford Coal Marketplace and there are these little um, arrows underneath it. And you'll notice that that's also the same here underneath coal. However, it's not underneath iron. So when you ever see this symbol on the board in any of these marketplaces, it means that you need to be connected. Now, that simply means, again, that you can draw a line. So if I start here in Oxford, I go through one link through Birmingham and then through another link and then all the way back through here. So you can see that this is one continuous line, therefore we are all connected. So even if this player, let's say, did not have a link here, this player would be connected to Oxford at the bottom of the board through using the purple links. So yellow is still connected to Oxford because there are links through there. So that's a fairly easy concept to understand. It's literally just, you know, if you were shipping goods somewhere that you could get it from the start to the destination point without interruption. It doesn't matter that it's your links or through someone else's network, that doesn't matter, just as long as you can go from the start of the point to the finish. Now, the other concept is what is part of your network. So when something is part of your network, it is either in the same city where you have an industry tile, or it is adjacent to one of your link tiles. That is all. Oh, um, they're not. Um, I actually, I, I should mention this because it's actually quite nice, but I'll, maybe I'll grab. Yeah, here I can show you guys. Um, this here is actually uh, something that I bought from um, a, a player in Calgary. And his studio is Black Thumb Creations. So he creates these really great acrylic overlays that are awesome for um, brass. He, he's made them for both. 
Um, the other thing is, too, is you can also get them. He makes them for Power Grid and other games that are just fantastic. So I really love this um, little piece that he's made for it now to see if I can get them back on. Okay, perfect. Okay, so back to... Um, yeah, no, it's a nice little addition, and actually it's not, it was really reasonably priced. I want to say that, oh, I can't remember now, I think it was $20, maybe $15, I forget, but um, through for both editions. So you can get all of the overlays for, for both uh, Birmingham and Lancashire. Okay, so yeah, so part of your network is anything that is adjacent to a link or that is in the same city where you have an industry. So that can be a bit of a, a difficult concept to understand when you're trying to expand because even though it might not seem like it, um, putting a rail down here means that Birmingham is part of my network. So when I'm doing a place, a link action, so my networking action, I can actually place a link on the other side of Birmingham because Birmingham is part of my network. So just think of it that way. It if if it's hard to visualize when you're trying to think like, oh no, that you know, I, I would have to have a city tile here for this to be part of my network on the adjacent side. But you can actually hop skip over cities. Um, Scott, I think if you click, so on your phone, um, if, actually, hold on, on my phone, I'm not sure, does anyone else know? I think if you just turn it sideways, I think that the, um, chat pops up, or if you click on the, on the window, it'll pop up. It's usually integrated into the app that you can chat at the same time. Okay. So, um, so, so that's really the two most important concepts in the game is understanding di the difference between what is linked and what is part of your network. And then that will allow you to actually spread out quite a bit further when you understand that you can skip over cities because in, a, in reality, this is part of your network so you can place a link next to it. But you have to kind of visualize it on the board. Um, okay. So we'll go into the different rules of the game. And um, the first action that you can take is the build action. And that's really your action that's going to take the longest. And that's also going to generate, um, in effect, your, your how you grow your board and how you get the most victory points. So it takes a, um, a, a little time and you might have to spend some time playing and then retracting. Uh, oh, it's okay, Scott. I'm happy to help whenever I can. So the build action is simple. You look on your player board, like I was showing you earlier here, and you choose something that you would like to build. Now, of course, you have to pay the demanded resource as well as the amount of money, or not money, I'm sorry, uh, pounds required. So in this case, if you wanted to build a level one ironworks, it would cost you $5 and one coal. Now, this is where that concept of being connected versus part of your network comes in. To access coal, because we have on the board those little arrows, it means that you have to be connected to either a coal market or to a coal industry tile that has coal on it to be able to consume coal. Now you'll notice iron doesn't have that on there, so you can consume iron from anywhere on the board. You don't have to be linked, you don't have to be um, connected, it does not matter, you can use it from anywhere. And that's, um, in the book they did mention that um, a little bit of historical reference to that is that coal was used in much larger quantities than iron, so you were able to ship iron at um, in smaller quantities, therefore it was a little bit more mobile, um, as opposed to something like coal that needed to be connected by rails or canals. So that's the reason for it. Um, so once you've paid the, the resource, so this is again, in this game I find that you're gonna have a lot of plays, oh no, like I can't do that, I'm not actually connected to anything. 
Um, but once you play the re pay the resource and you place your uh, your building, whichever it is, if it's any of these ones that produce a resource, so on the bottom of your board again, you have beer, iron, and coal that will actually have resources added to them, like I've done here, based on the amount of little cubes showing on the bottom, or in the case of beer, there'll be beer barrels. Now, the interesting thing about this, and a large part of the game, is being able to sell back to the market. So in the same way that you have to be linked for coal to be able to purchase that coal, you also have to be linked to be able to sell coal back to the market. And this happens regardless of whether you want it to or not. So if you are linked, which in this case we are linked to Oxford here, this coal would actually sell back to the coal market and occupy however many spaces. In this case it would only be one because there's only one spot. You would place it here in the coal market and gain the dollar value showing there. Now the same for iron, only again because iron you do not need to be connected, it would automatically go back here and sell wherever you build it on the board. Uh, well, Roxley is really good. They're going to send um, you that replacement, no problem. I had one of my games with the same, uh, a little defect, and they sent me a replacement, no problem. So, um, so again, when you're building these industries um, that have access to the market, um, I wouldn't say to wait too long, but you do want to build them when you can sell them back to the market because with these... Uh, resource buildings or industries, as soon as the tile empties, it flips. As opposed to the um, cotton, the uh, clay manufacturer, and the manufactured goods, you actually have to sell those buildings to get them to flip. I'll explain that later in one of the other actions, but for these um, three, so iron, coal, and beer, they flip once they've been depleted. And this is how you're going to gain victory points and how you're going to gain income in the game because income is very important. So when the tile flips on the other side, or if you just look on your player board, you can see what it is on the other side. You'll see here on the bottom corner in this hex, there's three victory points. So you would get that when you're scoring the canal era. And then it's also going to automatically increase your income by three. So you would just go over here and you would grab your income marker and move up one, two, three spots. Again, it's important to note, it's not three tiers. So you're not going to gain income of three pounds because each of these tiers is divided in different sections. So this is important to pay attention to when it comes to your loan action but that's how you're gonna generate income in the game is by having your tiles flip. So again, the build action is fairly straightforward for the most part. Um, you just have to be careful when it comes to the resource that you need. If you need coal, you need to make sure that you are either connected to a coal market that you can buy coal from the coal market for the dollar value show or the pound value showing, or that you're connected to somebody else's coal market to use their coal. Um, the other thing worth noting about coal is that you always use the coal industry that is the closest to you. And you can't skip over somebody's tile because you don't want it to flip to maybe buy it from the market. You have to use whatever is out on the board first. So in this case, when I went to build, if I'm purple player, um, building an iron works requires a coal. So I would place this tile here, consume one of the coal from the nearest coal market, which is this one here from the yellow player. And then, yeah, sorry, Scott, pounds, not, not dollars, pounds. Um, and then you'd remove a cube. If you happen to remove your opponent's last cube, then their tile would flip. So that's not something that I, I would worry about too much because inevitably it's going to happen. Um, if you need the iron, you need the iron, or if you need the coal, you need the coal. It's just the way it is. Okay, so that is how placing those work. Now your build action, as with any action, you have to discard a card to play. So in the case of building, you have two options. You can either use 
a city card, which will have a city name on it, or you can use a industry card, which will have an industry type. In this case, this one is beer. So with a city card, you can build any industry in that city that matches, um, that, that has that um, industry in the city, sorry. Obviously, if you're building using an industry card, you have to build that industry. Now, the, the tricky thing to remember again, which is the importance of knowing the difference between what your network is, is if you are using a city card, you can build in that city regardless of its part of your network. However, if you are using an industry card, you have to build in a city that is part of your network. So that's a bit of the, the trick with this is understanding the difference between those two concepts in the game. So just remember when it comes to your build action, if you're using a city card, you can build any industry in that city provided that you know you have the resources to pay for it. But if you're using an industry card, which has a specific industry requirement, it has to be part of your network. Now, the interesting thing is, is the very first turn of the game, you have no network because you have nothing on the board. So you can use that opportunity to play an industry card to sort of circumvent that needing to be part of your network, um, as well as the requirement to play a link as well, because that also requires that it's part of your network. I'll go over your network action, which is the next one. Um, but it's an important thing to sort of figure out at the start of the game. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll place somewhere that will give me either a link or access to the coal market because it's really important to be able to get there early on. Um, or it'll allow me to build an industry somewhere where I maybe don't have any city cards that are close to that. So it, it's an important first action in the game to be able to get around that networking thing. But after that, going forward, if I chose, you know, to build in this city and I wanted to build an industry um, with it, or I wanted to build with an industry card, it again has to be part of that network. So um, keep in mind, I'll repeat that a, a few more times as we're going through, because often when I'm playing with new players, they'll go to play something or to do an action. I'm like, no, nope, can't do it. It's not part of your network. Okay, so that's really your build. You can build, again, any industry that you want. There's no restriction um, other than once you've built um, multiple levels. Again, the ones that I mentioned, they can only be built during the rail era, so you can't build those during the first era, which most people don't get there, but if you happen to get there, that that's the only real thing stopping you. Um... The other thing that you can do during your build action is to overbuild. So this is important for a couple different reasons. Overbuilding allows you to spend either a card matching that city again, so a card matching the city that you have an industry in, or an industry card, and you can build on top of your current industry. So you can do that to replace a level one tile in anticipation for the canal era. So what that means is at the end of the canal era, every level one industry is going to come off the board. So you wanna try and get those level two industries out there before that happens. And sometimes you might be stuck with a card that only allows you to overbuild as opposed to building a level two in another city. So it's a good opportunity to be able to do that or to get in and replace one of your tiles so that you can have a fresh tile to sell back to the market if they're buying at a higher rate. Now, the other reason to overbuild is that it's a very rare occurrence, and I've actually never seen it happen in my games, is that you can build on top of other people's ironworks or their coal industries but only if there are no resource of that type anywhere on the board, including the market here. So if for whatever reason, the entire iron market was depleted and the there were no iron cubes anywhere on the board, you could play a card to build on top of somebody else's industry, which is a great move, but again, I've never really seen it happen. So that's your build action. 
Just remember that any time that you play any kind of action, you must discard a card. So that includes passing, if you did decide to pass, or if you couldn't do anything and you had to pass. Um, now, moving on to the second action is networking. So to network, that's to place one of your links. So either a canal link in the canal era or a rail link in the rail era. On the bottom of your board here, it'll have the cost indicated. So for a canal, it's three pounds. For a single rail in the rail era, it's five pounds. Or if you wanted to build two at once, it would be 15 pounds plus a beer. So during that networking action, again, it's understanding that you must build a link that is part of your network. So you can't simply place a link up over here because I don't have anything here that's part of my network. So it's important just to pay attention to that and make sure that when you're building these links that you're building them legally. And you just pay the amount and then you uh, place your link wherever you want that's part of your network. It's also worth noting that whenever you purchase anything or you uh, spend any money in the game, it doesn't go to the bank, it actually goes over here on your player tile, and this is how we're gonna determine turn order. So you spend everything that you want over here, um, it goes on top of your player token, and then we're gonna use that at the end of the round to determine our turn order. Now, the develop action, which is your third action, um, is to actually remove tiles from your player board here without having to build them. So it's a great way to get through some of these earlier levels that are a little bit maybe more expensive that you don't want to pay through to get to the top ones. Also, it's a good way to consume iron because for every tile that you remove, you can remove one or two for each develop action. You use up an iron cube for each tile. So if I developed through two tiles, I would remove two iron cubes. So you can do this in conjunction with your turn. You know, you could play an iron works and then develop using your iron cubes. So that's a nice way to kind of flip your tiles over quickly. Um, it's important to note that there are two tiles here on your player board. You'll see here on the clay works that have um, little light bulbs. So that means that you cannot develop through um, those two. So that's a level one and a level three iron work or clay works, I'm sorry, or pottery, clay or pottery. I'm not, I can't remember what they called it. Um, so again, that's an efficient way to work through your stacks um, to get to some of those higher valued victory point industries quicker. And then again, as a reminder, discard a card for any of these actions because in effect, the discard really um, acts as a counter for the round. So everybody should always have the same amount of cards in their hand. So that's the develop action. So that's to remove one or two tiles from your player mat. Now the sell action. So I have placed uh, one of these or the manufactured goods on the board here. So this is for the yellow player. Now you can see at the top of the tile here, there is a beer requirement. So to sell, almost any of your industries, you need to consume beer. In this case, this one would require two beer. Now, in the canal era, when we're playing out breweries, as I, I can I show you, I have one up here. Um, in the canal era, they only come with one beer barrel, but in the rail era, they come with two. So if you have an industry that requires two beer, you're going to need to source it from multiple breweries or get to one of these uh, variable market spaces before someone else does. So it's also worth noting that these market spaces have those little arrows on it, which means that you must be connected to that market to sell that type of industry. So in this case, I have 
my manufactured goods and this is a manufactured goods market. So I can sell that there. Now, if for whatever reason this was, let's say, a cotton manufacturing, I would not be able to sell to that market because that market does not want cotton. So you would have to find a way to link to this cotton manufacturing uh, marketplace down here in Gloucester or over here in Oxford that has one that will accept or that will purchase all three. So on each of these tiles too, you'll also notice that there are um, different prizes, I guess you would say, or different rewards for selling to this market first and consuming the beer from this market. In uh, this one over here, you would just get four victory points. Down here, you get a free develop. So you can just discard a tile from your player mat. Over here, you have an automatic increase of two of your income. Up here at the top, you have three victory points. And then over here at the very top in Warrington, which is a little bit harder to see, um, has five pounds. So if I wanted to perform a sell action, I would make sure that I have enough beer to consume. In this case, I need two. So there's one here, and then I have one over here up um, in this brewery. So you might be wondering, I'm just gonna aim this up a little bit. This beer is not linked to anything, but that doesn't matter when it comes to beer if it is your own brewery. So in effect, beer kind of acts halfway through uh, or, or half like the uh, iron and the coal, which means that if you are consuming from your own brewery, you can consume it from anywhere on the board. You do not have to be connected. If you are consuming from somebody else's brewery, you have to be connected to that. Again, that's different from being part of your network. So just remember, as long as you can draw a line from where you want to consume the resource to where the resource is needed, it's fine. It doesn't have to be through your own network. So in this case, this player here would have the appropriate amount of resources or beer to consume to sell this market. Uh, to sell this industry. So he would consume one beer from his own personal brewery and then one beer from this uh, marketplace over here, which would then allow him to flip this tile and that's how you sell your industries um, and flip those types of tiles. So clay, cotton, and manufactured goods need to be sold to flip. So as the same, in the same way that you would do if you flipped any of your other ones, you would increase your income automatically as depicted by this arrow symbol up on the bottom. And then at the end of the canal era, you would gain those eight victory points. This other symbol up on the top here is link um, points at the end of the era. So I'll explain that in a little bit, but basically each link that is adjacent to one of these tiles, you're going to gain victory points based on how many of these there are, hexes there are. So some of them only have one, some of them have two. Every one of the marketplaces has two. You'll notice that they have a little two here, a two link on there. So this purple link would be worth two victory points at the end of, of that um, canal era. Now the sell action is unique in the way that you can sell as many industries as you want during your sell action provided that you have access to beer. So if you've managed to link yourself up to a couple different breweries or have your own brewery and then you can sell to those markets. Now once the beer is gone here you still can sell to that market and in fact that might be the only market that wants that type of industry but you do not gain any additional bonuses because you did not consume beer from that market. So there's no bonus to get there anymore. Um, and so in that way, it's really about getting there before somebody else does, especially because beer is um, just another requirement that you would have to do. So if you can use beer from the market versus having to build your own brewery and then use your own beer. Um, Leicester or Le I don't I don't I don't think Leicester's on here. Scott, yeah, I don't I don't see it anywhere. Sorry. Um okay, so that is your cell action. 
Now, the um, the fourth action is is your loan action. So when you take a loan, you're going to take 30 pounds from the bank, and then you're going to decrease your income tr level on the track by three levels. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Well, actually, so if, if the beer is part of your own brewery, you don't. You can drink it and consume it from anywhere. It's like teleporting beer. I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting. Nobody can stop you from drinking your own beer. So one of the handy things to do if you really, I didn't, how do you, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. I'm not British. Um, so one of the handy things you can do is if you really want to keep your beer for yourself is that you can place it somewhere far away from other people. Um, and then that way it'll give you a little bit of time so that you can, so that you can consume it yourself. So, um, loans are so important in this game. Um, I can't tell you how important it is. You're going to have to take loans at some point. I would suggest to take them earlier on because when you drop down, you're not dropping down one spot. Uh, so, so I, I apologize. When you take a loan, you have to drop down three tiers. So on the board, you'll notice that each of the tiers early on are divided by either one, two, then three, and then four as you get around the board. So if I'm over here at 21 income and take a loan, I don't drop down three individual little spots on the board. I drop down three entire tiers, which means it would bring me down to 18 pounds income per turn. So that means to get back up to 21, I would have to increase my income by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. Now, if you take income over here, where those tiers are only either two or one, then you don't need to um, try as hard to regain those income levels. So it's an important thing to keep in mind. Often what I'll do at the start of my game for my first action is I will actually take a loan on my first action, drop myself down to minus three income, take 30 pounds from the bank, and then I'm set up for a few rounds and I can effectively spread out over the board and buy whatever markets or industry or buy whatever industries I want. And having to pay back three pounds, I'm usually going to get it back fairly quickly. Um, so again, taking those loans early on is really important. I typically take two to three loans in a game. Yeah, exactly. You take them early on. If you're forced into taking loans later on in the game, um, it's just, it's, it's so much more detrimental. Um, and it's important worth noting that in this game, in this, um, version of the game, you can take loans all the way up to the end of the game because, pounds or the you know the the money in the game is not worth any victory points at the end whereas if you're playing in Lancashire it is uh your your money is worth victory points at the end of the game so they don't allow you to take loans late in the game although in this game again I really wouldn't really recommend it if you're having to take loans that late in the game you're probably not doing very well anyways yeah they're beautiful these are the iron clays from the deluxe edition. They stack really nice. They feel real nice when you're playing them. So that's your loan action. It's very straightforward. And then your last action, which is actually a new action in this game compared to uh, the original brass, is to scout. So that's where these cards come into play. So scouting is discarding effectively three cards because you have to discard one for the action then you're going to discard two and you're going to pick up a wild location card as well as a wild industry card and then that'll give you a little bit more versatility on the board um, especially later in game when you're stuck or you've been blocked off from building now, it's important to note these wild location cards cannot be used to build 
in the farm breweries. So there are two spots. There's one here and then there's one down here. You'll notice there are no names on the farm breweries, so you can't use those wild location cards for a farm brewery because there is no location. Um, you can, however, use the wild industry cards to build in those farm breweries, provided, again, the same if you are um, playing an industry card to build, it has to be part of your network. So you would first have to have a link built into there or into here to build in those farm brewery spots. And that's the last action. So in summary, um, like I, I don't I don't think that the actions in the game are very complex. It's really more just understanding the difference between your network and whatever you are connected to. And that's the difficulty in the game because there's going to be a lot of playing something out and then realizing, oh crap, no, I'm actually not connected to that or it's not part of my network, so I can't do that. And that tends to happen a little bit more in this game too because of the addition of beer. Um, so once everybody, you're going to always have eight cards in your hand. I should have mentioned that. So every time that you go through your turn, you'll have discarded at least two and then draw two back up. When you've gone through this entire deck and your hand, that will trigger the end of the canal era. So a few things happen at the end of the canal era. As I mentioned earlier, all your level one industries come off the board. So you really need to concentrate on building or upgrading these industries into level two industries, or at least getting a couple level two industries out so that you have a presence on the board for the canal era. The other important thing, like I was describing earlier, is if you don't build those industries that, that only allow them to be built during the canal era, like this level one coal, you can't actually build that industry during the second era, which is the rail era, unless you do a develop action through it. So you kind of want to make sure that you're getting those first level industries out before you go into the rail era. Otherwise, you're going to be having to do those develop actions through them, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just uh, an extra step you have to do to get to some of those higher level industries. Um, now what I try and do is to keep um, an, an area on the board up to a level two that is close to a coal market because the difference between the canals that you're replacing, the canal links versus the rail links is that rails require iron to build. So it can be really difficult if you're not anywhere close to a canal or anywhere close to a an iron market. Sorry, my apologies, a coal market during the um, rail era because you need so much coal during that era. So be sure that when you're finishing the canal era that you're somewhere close to or that you can build um, coal that is part of your network so that you can consume it yourself. So those are just some little tricks that I try and do towards the end. Now the other thing that happens at the end of the canal era is that all of these links actually come off the board. So once all the links are gone, you're only going to be left with your level two or higher industries on the board and the rest gets wiped off. So it's essentially like starting the game all over. Um, that's why I can't emphasize enough that it's so important to make sure that you have at least some of those level two industry or higher tiles somewhere on your board. Now the last thing that happens during the canal era is that you are going to count up your links and give victory points based on what they are connected to. So it doesn't have to be your industries that, um, that generate points for you, it can be any industry. So in this case, if we look at Canoc, this yellow link here found in between has these two adjacent industries next to it. So there's a purple with a one link and a yellow with a one link. So that link here now is worth two victory points. 
as opposed to this one down here because there's nothing in Birmingham. So you'll have this this one industry only, uh, this one link, sorry, only being worth one victory point. So it's not a bad strategy in the game to build up a lot of links around the board because they will generate a lot of victory points for you. Not to mention you're then spreading your network out, which will facilitate building. Um, so I've tried a couple different strategies every time I've played to see what would work. Um, I really enjoyed going brewery and rails um, because I was able to use this double rail build action quite a bit. Um, I, I didn't have the limitations on beer that a lot of people had. <laughs> hey, I, I, yeah, I, there's people from all over watching. This is fantastic. Only because Scott is British, I get um, a little bit nervous saying all of these words because I pronounce almost all of them wrong. So, but what can you do? <laughs> um, yeah, so you're going to clear, you're going to count your victory points here and then clear off all the links as you're going along. Then you're also going to score the victory points showing on the back of the industry that's, that have been flipped. If you have an industry um, or a, a market, like one of these guys, let's say that wasn't flipped, He's not going to give you any victory points. So you want to make sure, again, that those are flipped before you go into uh, the rail era. Um, and then, then you're going to reset everything, draw back eight cards, and then start all over, but in the rail era. So that's, like I, like I said, the, the actions in itself aren't super complex. It's really just the distinction between connected and your network. I don't think I said ham. Birmingham? Birmingham? Yeah, I don't think I've ever said Birmingham. I can't say Lancashire right, though. It's like, I think that's right. I don't really know. <laughs> um... Does anybody have any questions um, just or any clarity or clarifications that you want um, from, from watching this so that I can clarify a few things? I mean, like I said, the, the strategy is so very deep, but the actions in itself are really not that difficult in the sense that, you know, it's really just making sure that you have the resources to pay for them. Um... So yeah, in a lot of your first games, you'll do a lot of, oh, okay, I'm going to place here, place here. Oh, no, wait, I don't have access to that. And so there'll be a lot of take backsies, but I mean, that's just part of learning this. And with the addition of beer, it's even more so because now you have to check for a third resource. And that double rail build action especially um, will trump people. You know, they'll go to play two and then realize, oh, I'm not linked to any beer. Um, the other thing worth noting that we didn't realize when we were first playing is that you only have to pay the resource after um, you're done your build action. So I could do a network action to build two rails and not have beer immediately or even coal immediately. But as long as I can connect to a coal market or a beer market during that action, then it doesn't really, it, it doesn't matter that I didn't have it to start with. So as long as you can get to it at the end, then that's fine. The other thing is that the beer that's found on these markets, um, you can't spend them for anything other than selling. So you could not use the beer in these different um, marketplaces to build rails. It can only be used towards selling. I just love this game so much, honestly. I mean, it's one of the better games that I've ever played. The amount of strategy needed to play this game well is huge, but there's also so many paths to victory. So you can play a different... Bass beer. What's a bass beer? Um... Yeah, when I was playing, like I said, every every time that I played, I've tried a different strategy, and I've been fairly successful 
each of the times other than um, I did go sort of like heavy um, oh there's too many people from the UK in this I'm like I don't understand half of these references <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the, um, you can really do a lot of different things to get to your paths of victory. I enjoy profiting from links. Um, the other thing too, oh, actually, and I, uh, I didn't mention this, so let me go back a quick second, is that, um, during the canal era, you can only ever occupy one space in a city space. During the rail era, you could occupy all of the spaces if you want to. So you can monopolize an entire city. But in the, the canal era, you cannot. You can only use one of the spots. But yeah, no, I... Just an American. Um, yeah, I, I can't say how how much I love this game. The artwork on it is beautiful. I don't know if you guys notice. It's hard to tell, but... All of these cards are linen, so like they, the the quality is just phenomenal. Um, the iron clay is just everything is so stunning in this game, um, and Roxley always does an amazing job, and they have the best customer service, and um, they've really changed. Zach, honestly, I like I'm keeping my the I'm keeping Lancashire because of the iron clays. So both of the games, um, the deluxe editions, come with these beautiful trays, and the the difference in price that I had to pay to get the second one was um, was really minimal to me, especially because it was free shipping to get both of them. So for an extra, I think it was 35 US, I got the other game, but also these beautiful clays. Um, so I, I take both out when we're playing and I set them on either side of the table. But I think for play-wise, um, personally for me, there's going to be some people that do like um, the original one better. But I think they've gone and fixed some of the issues that the first one had with balance. Um, I always felt like when I played the first one that... You know, because there's people that that play these games so many times and just become expert and can sit down and know the direct path to victory. And I felt like unless you played it a million times or if you were playing with somebody who had played it a million times, that you were way less likely to win because they already knew how to beat the game, I should say. Whereas in this one, because of the variable market spaces, I find that it's it's not as easy to do that, as well as the requirement of beer um, in the double rail action slows people down from spreading. I totally am. Scott, stop making fun of me. <laughs> Blankshire. Lancashire. I don't know. Some of them say, like, I, I, when I was doing my podcast, I even Googled it, and one of them said Lancashire, and then apparently it's just a dialect difference, so I don't know, but, um, yeah, definitely between the two, um, I, hand over fist, like, Birmingham, see, now I'm saying Birmingham, Birmingham, so much more than Lancashire. Lancashire is a place where I went up. <laughs> Fair point. Um, yeah, so regardless, I would recommend this game for anybody that likes a heavier economic game. It's so fantastic. And the production value is just bar none the best. Now, the only thing is, is I think during, or for the retail copy, it, it just comes with regular cardboard um, tokens for the, the pounds rather than the iron clays, but that's really negligible. I mean, for the co for, for everything else that you're getting in the quality, it's, it's amazing. 
it's sheer. So yeah, do um do any of you guys have any questions or anything that you might have missed or um, anything you didn't understand about what I was explaining that I can maybe clear up? Otherwise, yeah, that's that's how you play brass, Birmingham. Canock is Canuck. That's funny. There is no green player, but you know what? I was so happy that they had a purple player because purple's my favorite color. And then I flip it to the other side and there's no lady player. I was like, damn it. There is a, yeah, there's a female side for the gray and for the yellow, but I still play purple anyways. Yeah. No, the people that um, want your your traditional board game colors are not getting it in this one, that's for sure. 